صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مما بعد I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I thank him for guiding us to al-Islam and to the sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to learn this deen so that we can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon basira, upon knowledge. Inshallah ta'ala, what we're going to do tonight, we're going to start reading from this book, small book, of our noble shaykh, Dr. Abdullah al-Bukhari, hafizahullah ta'ala. And... من ثمرات التمسك بالسنة from the fruits of holding firm to the sunnah in another way what, what do you gain if you hold on firm to the sunnah what is the reward and the good things that you will gain by holding firm to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam this was a lecture actually the origin of this little book It was a lecture actually that the Shaykh has given. In Kuwait. In Jumad al-Ula in the year 1430 of the Hijra. So there was a lecture actually. No. No. So this is a lecture that our noble Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul al-Bukhari, has given in Kuwait some seven years ago. And he was transcribed and the Sheikh checked it and given the okay to, to be published so that the people can benefit from. And <coughs> there is seven fruits that the Sheikh mentioned seven of the fruits if a person hold on firm to them or if a person hold on firm to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but before we be, he mentioned these fruits first of all he says اولا ذكر بعض نصوص الوحيين الداله والامر على اتباع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم والمحذر من مخالفته صلى الله عليه وسلم. Before that, the Sheikh is going to in introduction he brings and mention some, not all, but some of the texts of the revelation from both the Quran and the Sound Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. They are proof that it is obligatory to follow the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. These are texts in the Quran and the Sunnah. They order us and command us to follow the Prophet ﷺ and warn us against disobeying him and going against his order. قال الشيخ حفظه الله الشيخ عبد الله البخاري المتأمل في نصوص الوحيين يجد أن الأدلة فيهما تضافرت دلالة على وجوب اتباع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم المبعوث رحمة للعالمين. وتحذر من مخالفته صلى الله عليه وسلم والإعراض من ما جاء عما جاء به. He said the one who reflect and ponder upon the text of the revelation, Quran and the Sunnah, he will find there is so many proofs in there that is obligatory to follow the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. The one that Allah has sent as a mercy to mankind. Likewise, you find this text warn against disobeying him and warn against turning the back against that which he has brought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَقُولُ الْإِمَامُ الْمُبَجَّلِ الْإِمَامُ أَهْلِ السُنَّةِ الْإِمَامُ أَحْمَدِ And then he mentioned this statement. Sheikh Abdul al-Bukhari bring a statement of the great Imam, Imam Ahl al-Sunnah, Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah who said, as this is a statement that is uh, transmitted by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah in his book As-Sarim al-Maslul As-Sarim al-Maslul that Imam Ahmad rahimahullah said نظرت في المصحف 
He says, I looked at the Mus'haf. فوجدت طاعة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم في ثلاثة وثلاثين موضعا. He says that he read the book of Allah and he found that Ubayn, the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم, find it in 33 places in the Quran. In 33 places in the Quran, he finds that obedience to the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Then the Shaykh Abu Abdullah al-Bukhari said, from that, and he began to bring some of the proofs. First he mentioned the ayah, you can, you don't have to write the ayahs, but just write the number, I'm going to give you the surah and the verse. And later on you can go home and verify, actually go look at these ayahs. First is the surah al-Nisa, the ayah 59. قال الله تعالى, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَأُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ ذَلِكَ خَيْرٌ وَأَحْسَنُ تَأْوِيلًا O you who have believed, obey Allah and obey the Messenger, obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those in authority amongst you. And if you differ amongst you pertaining to any matter, turn it to Allah. Ulema, this says, meaning to the book of Allah. And to the messenger, meaning in his lifetime. Sahaba, they were ordered to take their affairs back to him. But after his death, to the Muslim, they should turn their affairs back to his sunnah. If you truly believe in Allah and Allah's day. The second proof he mentioned is the ayah 32 of Surah Ali Imran. The ayah 32 of Surah Ali Imran قُلْ أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. صلى الله عليه وسلم. Say, obey Allah and the Messenger. صلى الله عليه وسلم. But if they turn away, for indeed Allah does not love the disbelievers. The ayah 65 of Surah An-Nur, or actually 56, I found 56, not 65, of Surah An-Nur وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ وَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ and establish the prayers and of course the ulama from the Sheikh Ibn Sa'di and especially in his tafsir and in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah he says establishing the prayer is achieved, of course, by having ikhlas first, and a person being on a sound creed, and by fulfilling the conditions of the prayer, the pillars, the wajibat, the obligatory elements, and the sunnah. This is how a person will establish the prayer. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He didn't say perform the prayer, He said establish the prayer. And there is big difference between just performing the prayer or establishing the prayer in a proper way. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has orders to establish the prayer, to give the zakat, and obey the messenger, وسلم, that you may receive mercy. Also you have the ayah 20 of Surah Al-Anfal. Ayah 20 of Surah Al-Anfal. قال الله تعالى يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ O you who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم. And do not turn away from Him while you are hearing, while you hear the revelation that is sent to you. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 92. Al-Ma'idah, 9-2. وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُوا الرَّسُولَ وَاحْذَرُوا فَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّمَا عَلَى رَسُولِنَا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And obey Allah and obey the Messenger, and beware. 
But if you turn away from the revelation, from these warnings, from these commands, you should know that there is nothing upon our messenger except to convey the message. And also in the ayah 24 of Surah Al-Anfal, 24 of Surah Al-Anfal, يا أيها الذين آمنوا استجيبوا لله وللرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحييكم واعلموا أن الله يحول بين المرء وقلبه وأنه إليه تحشرون Allah addressing the believers once again say O you who believed answer the call of Allah and the call of his messenger وسلم, when he call you to that which bring your life as Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says the real life is the life of the heart not just the life of the bodies if someone have only the life of the bodies so animals are alive they have live bodies as well he said the real life is the life of the heart and the soul and then can, can be achieved only through the revelation so the disbelievers they dead even though they have strong bodies, but they're really dead. They don't have the real life. The life that enabled them to, uh, to enjoy the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and being obedient to Him. Also in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 13, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ يُدْخِلْهُ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ Thus are the limit prescribed by Allah, Allah. And whoever so obey Allah and His Messenger, وسلم, Allah will enter them to a Jannat, gardens of paradise. Rivers flow and beneath, they will dwell in there forever, and that is the ultimate success. May Allah make us a new from the people of Jannah. Amen. Also in Surah An-Nisa, verse number 69, وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءِ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا And whosoever obeyed Allah and the Messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, such they will be amongst those that Allah has bestowed upon them their, his favors and blessings amongst the prophets the truthful the martyrs and the righteous and how excellent is the company of these indeed this ayah explains the ayah in Surah Al-Fatiha by the way the ulama they mention when you say اهدنا الصراط المستقيم Sirat al an'amta alayhim. Who are those people that Allah have this in'am? This ayah 69 explains. There is the path of the prophets and the truthful and the martyrs and the righteous. Also in Surah An-Nisa we have the ayah 115, 115. Ta'ala, ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوله ما تولى ونصله جهنم وساءت مصيرا and whoever opposes the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam after guidance has been made clear for him and choose to be on a path other than the path of the believers the ulama from the shaykh al-albani rahimahullah says that the believers here is the first believers meaning the companions. Because when this ayah was revealed, the believers then, they were the companions of the Messenger of Allah Wasallam. So, and choose to follow the path other than that of the believers, meaning the path of the companions, we shall lead him to that which he has chosen, and we shall cast him in a hellfire, and what a terrifying place indeed is, we seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from it. Ameen. Also in Surah Al-Anfal, from the ayah 13 of Surah Al-Anfal, وَمَن يُشَاقِقِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ